Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Life on Board, Amy Jo. Well what a response that we got after the last vlog showing the tour inside of Amy Jo. Many of you left some lovely comments on that. So it's clear that you really enjoyed the tour through Amy Jo so thank you for that and we really do appreciate those comments. Please do keep them coming. The feedback really helps. So we had quite a lot of uh, interest in how Chris and I actually got into narrowboating in the first place. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let Chris explain how we started out uh, and then we'll show you what happened during the boat build. So over to you Chris. Okay, well we moved to Chester in 2000 and for something better to do we used to take walks along the canal. We found ourselves at Northgate Locks one day and we just helped other people through and we thought quite enjoyed this. So we had a few holidays on the canals, um, one was just the two of us and sometimes there was one canal holiday where there was eight of us which was really good fun actually. Was <laughs> <laughs> it was good fun with my brother there and that. And uh, so we'd hired several times. I thought this would be such a great thing to do when we retired and that was where the seed was set and the adventure began. <laughs> <laughs> So, with the decision made, we, um, we really need to go back in time to see what happens. So, let's just take you back in time. Over the few years preceding the build, we spent a lot of time formulating the design for Amy Jo. Using a photo of the shell being delivered at Fernwoods, I used Microsoft Paint to mock up the external colour scheme. This boat, Magpie, was the inspiration for the colours as we fell in love with the look. The two-tone grey looked absolutely superb. We saw it on the Leeds Liverpool Canal during one of our hire boat holidays. The inset picture was our original design idea. Much better looking on Magpie, I have to say. As for the interior, We've used several boats at Crick Show and finalised on this design. I used Google SketchUp to make a 3D image which greatly helped the boat builders during the build. I'll put the link for SketchUp in the comments below. Meantime we visited the Crick Boat Show each year and after viewing several boats settled on four boat builders. Firmwood, Braid Bar, Hartwood Boats and Scenic Boats. Unfortunately the latter two were no longer trading by the time we placed our build slot. In 2011 return, we returned and eventually settled on Fernwood Boats and an Alexander Boats shell. The build slot was booked and the house put up for sale and a smaller bungalow bought to release the equity. The day eventually came and Amy Jo's base plate was laid on the 2nd of November 2012. We were present and made this short video although the quality is not good. This was a monumental moment for us as we realised our dream was suddenly beginning to come true at last. As the weeks passed we visited Alexander Boats regularly to watch the progress. Amy Jo was slowly rising off the floor and looking more and more like a narrowboat as each week passed.
Months went by and finally Amy Jo's shell was completed. Jim Sparks, who runs Alexander Boats, did a fantastic job building her and we can't recommend him highly enough. The workmanship was absolutely superb. On the 8th of May, Amy Jo was craned out of the workshop and transported by Tuckies Limited to Grantham and Firmwood Boats Factory. We followed her in the car to record the journey, but unfortunately the wet weather gave her a very poor video, so my apologies for the poor quality in the next segment. So he knows where to put them next time. But they crane her off. After a two hour trip Amy Jo was finally settled into a home for the next seven months to be fitted out. But that is for the next vlog. But for now... Yes, it's time for our regular feature for our non-boating viewers and this time we're going to have a look at interiors. Now I could spend all year talking about all the different types and styles and shapes and sizes but for now we're just going to look at the more popular layouts and decor. A typical layout consists of a living room or saloon at the front, then the galley or kitchen. Depending on the boat length there is then a second bedroom or sometimes dinette followed by the bathroom and finally the bedroom. Another popular layout reverses the one we've just seen, where the bedroom is now at the front and the kitchen to the rear. Popular with cruiser sterns, this layout is more sociable when cruising. Of course, layouts can differ widely to suit the owner's requirements, and this one, popular with many hire companies, has several beds for large groups or family. A more traditional layout has the engine move slightly forward 
and a boatman's cabin to the rear, like that on historic working boats. The rest of the cabin can be laid out to suit the owner, like this one. You'll remember on working boats, whole families lived in this space, but nowadays the cabin is either used by the owner because they like living in the back cabin, or it acts as another bedroom for when guests stay aboard. This particular one is in the, in the cottage style, with lace and wooden furniture befitting with that type of style. Some owners prefer the more contemporary look with clean lines and minimalist looks. Alright, I've decided that I'm going to hang some washing out today. I know it's a bit cloudy, but we'll see what happens. So, we store our washing line up in one of our top boxes. I can't reach because it's too far across from me. So Steve has to get me the washing line out when I need to. Right, Steve's now got the washing line and the attachment that goes on our tiller arm out of our top box. And the next thing you'll do is to fix it to the tiller arm. You'll be wondering how we actually get a washing line out on the back of the boat and we use this piece. It actually fits onto the tiller arm, or swan neck as we call it. Slides on and just clamps down. And we use a tiller pin, just the same as we do for the tiller extension. Put that in there and that holds it in place. And then we just do these wing nuts up, just to clamp it nice and firm onto the tiller arm, like so. Now we can take the washing line, which is one of these uh, whirly gig washing lines, and that pops in there. And I keep the bungees on just to keep all the, uh, the line from untangling. Uh, and it keeps it nice and tidy when it's packed away. Uh, take these off. It'd be a bit fiddly, but it's worth it. Get it all tangled up. So, with that released, it's no different to the washing lines you have at your house at home. All we do is open it out a little bit, pull it up, snap it into place, and then the last job is to is to just tighten the clamp screw down here so that it doesn't fall out. There you go. All ready for Chris to hang our washing on. Now, the next thing is if it's right the way up there and we already know how vertically challenged Chris is, <laughs> how does she get a washing on there? Okay, so we've got the washing line up and as you can see Chris can now reach. <laughs> and the reason for that, if I pan down, she has to stand on a step stool. <laughs> but there you go, she gets all the washing out there and the sun has now come out. Wow. So hopefully, even though it's cloudy, we're going to get some dry washing. Blowing? It's blowing, there's a bit of a breeze. So uh, there we go. Bedding and towels today and I, I like those, getting a nice breeze. That's it, that's how we hang the washing out. Well that's it for this edition uh, everybody. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this particular blog. Uh, we've started our story with the um, shell of Amy Jo being built and in the next vlog we'll finish off the story of her fit out and her launch. So that'll be something to look forward to. So if you want to be notified of future vlogs, don't forget to press the subscribe button somewhere along here. <laughs> and if you want to be notified of the vlogs, please press the bell. And don't forget, if you enjoy the vlogs, give us a thumbs up, please. That really does help. Yeah, not and, a thumbs down. <laughs> yeah, not a thumbs down. And uh, keep the comments coming. They're really helpful to us. They're giving us good feedback. 
and it's nice to know through the comments that you're enjoying them. So please do keep your comments coming. So until then, till next time, stay safe, stay well, and we'll see you again on Life On Board Amy Jo. Bye. Bye. Hello. Hi everyone! <laughs> Try it again. Hello everyone! That's and too late! <laughs> it's because I'm looking at your fingers! <laughs> how else does it, Nadja? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>